Hi, Darren Mangum here, the PPM attorney. Um, wanted to give you uh, just a video update on some of the latest uh, guidance that has been come out for that has come out for opportunity zones, uh, especially in connection with uh, putting together private placement memorandum uh, to raise capital for investment in a opportunity zone. Um, uh, really great, uh, great guidance uh, has come out recently by the Internal Revenue Service. Um, that's helpful in, in knowing how to structure these kind of investments. Um, uh, so some of the good news is is that um, you know obviously regarding uh, the business itself, um, uh, some of the latest guidance has indicated because you know you do have companies that that are you know not just all located in one area; they're spread out in different areas. You've got employees that are that are located uh, in different jurisdictions. At least if, um, if uh, 50% of the employees of the company are working inside the Opportunity Zone, at least 50% or more, then you know, the rest of the employees could be maybe scattered at different places in the United States, and you'd still, it, the, the company would still qualify as, a, uh, as, a, in, uh, as an Opportunity Zone uh, property. Uh, for investment, and uh, or another option is that if at least fifty percent of the business's services are offered inside the opportunity zone, and maybe they have some other locations elsewhere, uh, at least the at least fifty percent or more are inside the zone, it's fine. Um, and also, if the if the business the, if the management uh, or operation of the business is located in the opportunity zone, but maybe they have. Um, you know, maybe they have warehousing located elsewhere. Maybe they have manufacturing located elsewhere. But if uh, the management or operation of the business itself is inside the opportunity zone, uh, then it qualifies. So that's some that's some great news for a lot of uh, a lot of our clients. Um, <clears throat> you know, we as I mentioned, we open an office in Puerto Rico, uh, <clears throat> uh, not totally for for opportunity zones, but. Uh, for uh, some of the tax advantages of being in an opportunity zone. Um, <clears throat> uh, some of the other guidance that has come out uh, are related to the timing of the exchange. If you have a uh, investment previously, it was thought that you know similar to a 1031 exchange that you had to um, you know within 180 days of uh, you know incurring the capital gains obligation that you had to then put it into an opportunity zone. Well, the new guidance has made it clear that you have up to a full year uh, to uh, to uh, invest in an opportunity zone, and so uh, a little bit of extra time there as well. Um, also, uh, the guidance also talks about the um, uh, improvements on a property. Uh, it was thought that okay, if we're going to buy a piece of real estate and we're inside an opportunity zone to do a, a real estate improvement. Uh, that we would have to do a substantial improvement, like we'd have to build a hotel or build a uh, multifamily office building or multifamily residential complex. Well, even if you were to just buy vacant land in an opportunity zone, uh, it still qualifies as uh, opportunity zone property because maybe uh, you know there is no, um, you know, I mean that's a possibility because you know obviously the timing of of uh, of the investment may you know may not warrant substantial improvements now, but maybe infrastructure or what have you. So um, so that's a big deal when it comes to real estate offerings. Um, and also, uh, you know, in situations where you do have, when they're drawing the boundaries uh, on an opportunity zone, a map, you know, sometimes the boundaries cut right through a building or cut right through a property. Um, and so part of the, part of the prod, part of the property or part of the company or is outside the opportunity zone and some is in as long as you know again the same rule as long as most uh, more is in than not uh, or most of the most uh, say, say the the 50 percent or more the building is inside the opportunity zone the rest can be outside the opportunity zone and and that's not a problem as well so so really some common sense uh, guidelines uh, and guidance uh, issued by the IRS on this uh, on this uh, critical and important issue uh, uh, I know it's um, uh, for our clients uh, doing private placement memorandums to raise capital inside an opportunity zone, or to um, you know maybe restructure their business uh, as an opportunity zone type property business. Um, 
in order to attract capital. Certainly those are some things that uh, are possible. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'll, put, uh, I'll, click, I'll put a link in my uh, video below um, uh, that uh, may uh, give you more information. I'll, I'll give you a link to the IRS's uh, website uh, guidance on this for more information. But uh, anyway, happy to uh, help you with your opportunity zone if you're putting together a private placement memorandum or attracting, trying to attract capital or maybe you're putting together an opportunity zone fund in order to go and invest in opportunity zones. Uh, certainly we're the law firm uh, that could definitely help you with that. Um, uh, anyway, hopefully this video is uh, helpful to you. Uh, if you. If you like it, please click the like button or subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, again, if we can help you in any way or just answer any questions, uh, feel free to call the number uh, down below as well or shoot us an email. Uh, be glad to help you. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Thank you.